everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm coming in with a hot dye bath that has, ooh, I think probably at least eight tablespoons of white vinegar, and at least three and a half liters of water plus 16 cups or something. There's, there's a lot going on in here, and it is still warm. So to this dye bath, I am adding 100 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% Superwash Merino. And if you would like to learn more about it, I have an affiliate link in the video description. I'm turning the heat back on on low. And we're going to come in with some little bits of a 1% stock solution. And I'm going to come in and add just drops. Mainly because I was curious what might happen just adding the colors in a drop at a time, where these drops are definitely hitting the water surface of the water first before sort of settling in on the yarn. And I know that the colors will likely spread out a fair amount, but I kind of just wanted to see what would happen. Uh, and I probably only added you know, maybe two milliliters so far of a 1% stock solution, which is one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of water. So overall, there's not a lot of dye going in, but this is just really soothing and fun. Let me zoom you in so you can see one of these drops sort of just like move. And it's so cool because there's only 100 grams of yarn in here that the dye is able to go down multiple layers because everything is so spread out. But anyway, that first color, and I still have some more because I think I will flip the yarn at some point to add more color. Uh, that first color was forest green, and now I'm coming in with some dark navy. This is also a 1% stock solution that I am starting with. And this time I'm also not going to use up all the dye, but just sort of randomly apply it. I've been enjoying using these Pastor pipettes recently to apply color to yarn, including using drips. But when you do drips on the countertop, you're going to end up with things that are more concentrated. And the nice thing about this warm dye bath right here is that it's warm, it's steamy, but there's not a ton of movement in it at the time. And oh my gosh, watching these colors spread is mesmerizing. I'm sure there's some people being like, this is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Um, but I think that the direction it's going is gonna be really, really fun. All right, and now I have some true black. I feel like I don't know for sure, but I feel like I had the most forest green, but I don't know for sure. I also don't know if it's, it may make a difference if I drop from high up versus if I drop close to the surface, sort of how these dyes move. Let me zoom you in again here. So you can just see the curls of the dye going down. It's just so fun and cool to just let that happen and let that influence the spread because some dye will spread into the water and sort of go all over but some of it is striking a little bit faster and that's just really really fun and so yeah I mean these since these were one percent stocks I could have added them back to my stock solution bottle but also I was like there's something really soothing about just doing this and I'm curious to see like just how much it would spread, how much things would move and things like that. So I have used I think most of those colors I had measured out uh, and I think that I want to let this sit. I'm going to increase the heat a bit which will probably cause a little bit more movement as the heat travels through the pan, but I'm gonna let this sit for I think 10 minutes before we move it. Um, because 
I do think that we have really, really good coverage here, but there's no doubt that there's some amount of yarn that's getting contact with that dye first, and so I would like to just mix it up before we add the rest of the color on. I could move it now and not wait, but what waiting will preserve is there's a lot of, not a lot, because there's not a lot of dye we added, but there is dye in the liquid overall, and there's micro pockets of more green, more navy, more gray, and if I were to move it right now, that would all, we'd be encouraging that sort of base layer color to mix up a lot more right now, versus letting some of those dyes settle in that pocket and letting there be some of that more micro variation. Okay, I'm going a little underexposed because I feel like that makes it a little bit easier to see the difference in some of the pastel tones. I think that when it's more properly exposed, I find, well, at least looking at the viewfinder, it's just a little harder to see. But anyway, we'll be back. Okay, we've got a fair amount of color spread. There's still a little bit of color in the water, but I just also wanna show how much color coverage we have here because we've got color pretty much all over because the colors were able to spread. But we definitely have some things that feel a little bit more speckle-esque. So that's the reason for moving and adding more color. And I'm just sort of going around, I'm starting with the black this time and layering it on, knowing that things are gonna average more and get deeper, but it's just fun. And I mean, ultimately, like maybe, ooh, I, I don't have a good estimate of how much dye we use. Certainly nowhere near even like, 50 milliliters, probably I would say between 10 and 20, but I have not paid strict attention to how much color I am drawing up uh, in this Pastor pipette each time. And so therefore, it's hard to say for sure. Yeah, but all of this was dye that in theory I could have just put like back into the stock solution container because it's all just like 1% stocks. But I thought that it would be fun to play around with it and to do something like this. And I will eventually rinse out the cups and pour this last bit of color onto the yarn, but I think I'm gonna wait until after we give like this round time to just sort of set and settle on it. Uh, so I'm once again gonna wait. I think I'll wait about 15 minutes and then we'll pop back over. This is fun and I feel like it looks super just gray on camera, but there's like, there's like green and blue and black notes. It's very, very, very fun. Okay, uh, the only thing I have left are these like little bits from just rinsing out the cup. So that was just a little bit of our green. We're gonna come in with like a little bit of navy, maybe move it around a tiny bit. That seemed like it was a little more concentrated than I thought, and then the little bit of black is next to nothing. So now I am going to leave this to heat for just 30 minutes to make sure everything is set. There are some like, some of these colors are colors that do uh, end up sort of coating the pan a little bit. Like if I wipe it with a paper towel, you can see that there's dye there. Uh, and so sometimes some of that also settles towards the bottom of the pan. So I feel like after 30 minutes, then we can remove the yarn. The timer went off and so I've turned off the heat and I'm gonna leave the yarn in here to cool off for a while which is sometimes a decision that I make based off of if I'm filming something else, which I am currently, and so I need to get back over to that, um, or if I need the pan for something else. And so sometimes that's how I decide if I'm gonna let it cool off in the pan, which doesn't ever hurt anything. So yeah, the decision to leave yarn in the pan to cool is never one that would hurt the yarn. It's just, if I need the yarn to cool faster because I wanna wash it sooner, then I might remove it. If I need the pan for another project, 
I might remove it. Or if I don't have space to put the yarn, I might leave it in the pan to cool. So those are all factors that contribute to my decision, whether I leave it in the pan to cool or remove it right away. Uh, but ultimately, like that's not uh, a decision that you should really stress over. Just do what is the most convenient. And I mean, if there's a lot of dye left in the water, then leave it in there to cool uh, is a good choice. <laughs> But anyway, once the yarn is cool, I will remove it from this bath so that way we can wash it. But I don't, I, but no matter where you leave the yarn to cool, you do want it to cool before you start washing it. This yarn is so cool. It is just really, really subtle, but has so much dimension to it. I am very, very excited. Uh, ooh. This is something that would be harder to scale up for sure because, and I'm adding a little just soap, because you need to really have the yarn be free floating to get the coverage all over. And so once you start adding two or three skeins of yarn to the pan, then all of a sudden one drop of dye doesn't have as much ability to move. Even if you increase the volume of water a lot, uh, less of one skein is at the surface area. So it could work. That could be something worth trying, but I'm not seeing any bleeding. So I'm gonna rinse out all of the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. This yarn turned out beautiful. The backdrop feels in some places it's more blue, in some places it's a little more green, but the overall effect is rather gray, which is really, really fun. It is a neutral, but there's still so much dimension in here. I mean, when you look at sections of the fiber, the color is washed over so lightly in places. It really, really feels like glazed or something, just this gorgeous shallow penetration because the color was just lightly traveling and then gently like sticking to the yarn. Part of the effect that we see on the yarn is a little bit dependent on the colors that we used for the dyeing to begin with. If I tried this with some other types of colors, the effect may not feel quite the same. So there is like some variety to it, but there's an element to this that is somewhat reproducible in that I know I was starting off with 1% stock solutions of dark navy, forest green, and true black. So therefore, just taking a little bit of those dyes, I could in theory recreate something like this. The issue is I'm not sure how practical it would be to do this uh, with say 300 grams of yarn in a pan just because part of the reason why it worked so well is that the yarn was really floating and the water as the dyes moved around could really access all of the skein there wasn't i guess resist because of the yarn packed in and so on one hand maybe you could do something if you had like a really lot of water in the dye bath with 300 grams of yarn, but I'm not sure. I don't know. Is this something that I should give a shot? Uh, please leave a comment down below. These colors are so delicious. This effect is really, really wonderful. I, ooh, I'm wondering if I can do this again on purpose. I really, really am. I am so intrigued and I, okay, I, I know I could do this again on purpose. I guess my question is, can I scale this up in a way that I'm doing more than 100 grams at a time? Because that uh, is not very scalable for say, dyeing yarn for Hanukkah or something like that. Uh, but I am just very, very intrigued and excited. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and please make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel turn on notifications, give it a thumbs up, and all of that jazz. All of those things really help the channel grow. Man, I, I just keep staring at this and I just wish I had more than 100 grams. I mean, that's honestly what I'm wishing. I'm wishing that I want more in a, the same dye lot. 
And so that's something that I am definitely going to need to play around with. Oh my goodness. I love it when I just randomly decide I want to try something out and then it really inspires me and excites me. That's really, really fun. And a huge reason why I love filming these videos because they give me an excuse to explore tangent thoughts that I have. And through that exploration, I learn more and more about how to apply color to yarn. And that improves my skills and allows me to find like my own personal take on things. And I don't know, I just really enjoy the process and I really appreciate all of you watching. Thank you so much for watching.